God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for your liberality, your generosity. Let's turn in our Bibles to Matthew chapter number seven. Uh, we're going to be reading verses 15 through 29, continuing in the topic, the message that I started last Sunday. I couldn't really finish it. May have to continue it a little bit more next week to try to get through all these ideas that I feel the Lord is speaking to us in this season. Uh, we preached last week, stop lying to me, uh, attempting to speak deeply about the dangers of spiritual deception and propaganda uh, that are being fed to us through all kinds of sources. Unfortunately, some preachers, some internet uh, 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 viral figures, definitely our elected officials and politicians, some of our cultural influencers, telling us lies, lies that do not contribute to uh, our continued uh, journey in this terribly difficult season. And so uh, I want us to continue on in this vein um, and uh, hear what the word of the Lord speaks to us today. It's going to be coming from Matthew chapter 7, verse number 15, and uh, continuing to really go deep in uh, what does it mean for us to be able to discern the truth uh, and uh, understand the differences between lies, falsehoods, and deceptions, and those things that we know can bring us life uh, because they are indeed flowing from the eternal well of truth and, and spirit that come uh, from the living God. So let's turn our attention to the words of Jesus. This is the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is speaking to his uh, uh, not only disciples, but literally uh, thousands of individuals that came to hear Jesus teach uh, from time to time. And the scripture says he sat them down on a mount, a side of a mountain, and he taught. Uh, literally, Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, the largest collection of Jesus' words, Jesus' admonition. Some say that if you were a follower of Jesus and did everything Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount, you'd be a faithful follower of Jesus. Well, I'm here to tell you that uh, this is uh, a very important bedrock of the Christian faith. And so we're going to uh, take a few of these passages of Scripture that the Lord has brought uh, to my heart to help us uh, continue this message series on stop lying to me. Matthew chapter number seven, verse number 15, should pop up on your screen. This is what Jesus says, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothes, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, will you recognize them? Oh, Jesus is giving it to them, right? Oh, my goodness. We'll keep reading verse number 21. Jesus don't let up. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy? in your name and in your name did we not drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles then jesus will tell them plainly i never knew you my god get away from me you evildoer Woo! jesus ain't playing around last pericope here uh verse number uh 20 uh 24 therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise person. Uh, somebody say amen. Who built their house on the rock. Woo! And the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Then rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. 
When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching and because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. Lord, have mercy. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. Yes, yeah, so we're going to continue on the series. Stop lying to me. Uh, the subtext of this message simply will be, I am liar proof. I am liar proof. Uh, come on, let's pray for a few moments. God, we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for the word of God that has been read for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide your word in our heart so we will not sin against you. And please send your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. May it rest upon me and even the hearers of your word. And we'll say thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of the way say amen. Come on, just put that in your chat. Say, I am liar proof. Say it again. I am liar proof. Now, last week, we, we delved deep down uh, the well of trying to continue to figure out what does it mean for you and I to not be people who are susceptible to the lies, the deceptions, and the falsehoods that are being promulgated in our larger society. And it is quite disturbing, loved one, when we are more prone to the beautiful lies than the hard truths, the truths that even we may not always appreciate, but when told, embraced, and processed, they can indeed bring us to a place of freedom and liberation. Did not Jesus say that if you know the truth, the truth will set or make you free? Isn't it interesting that in the mind and the work and the ministry of Jesus, Jesus spoke truth even when it caused tension, when it caused some vulnerability. Jesus' truth, particularly to the powers, to those who were living out what they believed to be truth, but certainly was sprinkled with enough deception that turned the nugget of truth into a falsehood. I mean, that is part of what, what liars do, child of God. Liars will seize on a nugget of truth and, 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 and they'll build a falsehood around it because they know that you and I have some impulses, some anxieties, some, some fears, some inhibitions. We know that there are some things that are true about our experience or, or the world around us, but we also know that there are people out there who will take the nuggets of truth, the, the glimpses of truth that we know, and they will build a falsehood and a strategy around it to keep you and I paralyzed. Living out a, 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 a form of life that is beneath our privilege. I want you to be mindful that in this moment, you and I cannot allow ourselves to become victims of falsehoods and propaganda. There are indeed people all across the world, literally, who are excited about the many ways that our country and the people within our country are being overtaken by falsehoods. I've been reading up a lot on all kinds of uh, conspiracy theory movements that are cropping up all across the country, and none greater than this this, this uh, diabolical conspiracy scheme that is called Quanon. Some of you may have heard about it, Q-A-N-O-N. And it is a, a, a troublesome emergence, particularly within the Christian spaces where people are unable to discern truth from fiction. That you have individuals who are literally posting anonymously online conspiracy theories that are attempting to seize on some of the nuggets of truth that are often uh, percolating in lots of our, 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 our circles of influence, but it crosses a line into deception. 
I mean, just if I give you one example, uh, we know that uh, within our communities, black, brown communities in particular, the way media is used to criminalize and to keep uh, certain kinds of stereotypes alive, to make these uh, assumptions about black and brown people's worth and our behavior uh, to be criminal, uh, they use these, these mechanisms of the media to promulgate and to, to literally spread falsehoods. I think Malcolm X said that if you're not careful, the newspaper will have you hating the victim and loving the oppressor, right? But what, what you have to pr appreciate is while Brother Malcolm was right in saying that if Donald Trump says it, don't you know that both of their, their, their goals with that truth are very, very different? Brother Malcolm is trying to help you and I be aware of the ways the media help reinscribe oppression. Mm -hmm. But Donald Trump is using this sensibility to cause you and I to doubt things that we know with science and with knowledge and wisdom can literally save our lives. You see, there is a truth that can be promulgated across the lines and the spectrums of difference and politics and religion, but one must always check the source, the foundation, and the trajectory of the use of this information. And that is why I love the scriptures, because they are always, as Jesus uh, preaches, uh, nestled in a trajectory of historical conversations about the living God, who has for thousands of years revealed God's self to a particular people called the Jews. And that we are that people. We are the descendants of these folks who come from sub-Saharan Africa and the Middle East. That we are these people who have with great uh, 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 love and appreciation, as the scripture says, been grafted into. We have been enjoined into the body of Christ, both the, the, the religious or the spiritual body, but also the body that is our relational connection to one another. And that in this work of discerning truth, of figuring out what would God have us to do in this moment, we are constantly having to guard ourselves against the lies of the enemy. How many of you know that the enemy loves to tell you a good lie? The enemy loves to whisper things in your ear that we know and you know aren't true. Why? Because the lies create a false sense of reality. And if you and I can't live in the real world, I want you to know we will not have the solid footing we need to navigate the will of God on earth as it is in heaven. I mean, just think about that for a second. God is asking you and I to help usher in, to help steward the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. How can we be faithful stewards of the kingdom on earth if we are always dabbling in and, and building our lives on the lies of the enemy who are literally trying to destroy the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven? In many respects, it is important for you and I to appreciate that one of the greatest challenges of faithful following of Jesus in an age of falsehoods is the tendency to lapse into religious fundamentalism. And this religious fundamentalism is critical for me to define for us because I've talked about this a little bit last week and throughout the last several weeks that fundamentalism does not discriminate. You can be a conservative fundamentalist. You can be a more a liberal fundamentalist. You can be a Christian fundamentalist. You can be a Muslim fundamentalist. You can be a capitalism fundamentalist. You can be a woke fundamentalist. You can be a sleep fundamentalist. Fundamentalism does not create the kind of liberation we seek. Why? Because fundamentalism is really about control and not liberation. Lord, have mercy. Look, when I looked up fundamentalism, I was looking at a, 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 a study that was being done about the way fundamentalism 
creates certain kinds of appearances in our psyche of control. And then they delved into defining what religious fundamentalism is, a collection of infallible beliefs or principles that provide guidance regarding how to obtain salvation or the highest quality of life. Religious fundamentalists believe in the superiority of their religious teachings and in a strict division between righteous people and evildoers. Religious fundamentalism has a strict binary of black and white, rigidity. There is no gray in the fundamentalism of religious and other wise, other kinds of fundamentalist behaviors. Why is that important? It's important for you and I not to be fundamentalist because if you were a fundamentalist to its fi a final conclusion, none of us would be saved. <laughs> How I wish I had some honest folk up in here today that, that know that much of our lives are lived within the gray areas and not on the spectrums of black or white not on the spectrums of the polarities, that there are moments and times when that which we would want to do, we cannot do, and it is the grace of God, literally God's grace, that is injected into our lives to save us from the consequences of binary good and evil, black and white type fundamentalist thinking. Religious fundamentalism reminds or causes you and I to think that everything that exists can be made sense of through your own rationality. Woo! I mean, that's kind of why I'm a Pentecostal, and that's why I hope you are Pentecostal. Because as we stated last week, it is not the rigidity or the legalism of the law that brings life, but it is the spirit that finds ways to make all of these things add up to the purposes of God in the world. And this is why I want you to keep reminding yourself of one of these truths that <coughs> religious fundamentalism, I think I have this as a quote, religious fundamentalism erodes the catalyzing work of faith by replacing the mystery of God with the certainty of human knowledge. I'm going to say that again. Religious fundamentalism erodes the catalyzing work of faith by replacing the mystery of God with certainty of human knowledge. That what fundamentalism will do is it will try to boil everything down to something that only you or the others who you like can live out. And it will wash away the complexities and the nuances that make life so important and so worth the living. Well, in this moment, we have Quanon and these other kinds of conspiracy theories that are trying to make sense of a world they can't recognize nor control anymore. And they are building false conspiracy theories around these uh, deep state actors who are, who are engaging in all kinds of pedophilia and all kinds of, uh, of, of sexual exploits. And they are uh, worried about th these made up enemies that are literally distracting them, the imaginary enemies, distracting them from the real enemies that they must defeat every day. And that's why I continue to believe that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And it is our responsibility not to be so obsessed with the devil we can't see while we ignore the devil we can see every day. You ought to just put that in the chat and say, I refuse to ignore the devil I can see while I'm out here chasing ghosts, amen. While I'm out here chasing invisible problems and situations that I can't prove, but they are being promulgated by the liars of this age. And child of God, if you're gonna be someone who is liar proof, we are gonna have to develop some discernment and some wisdom and some knowledge and some intellect that allow us to be able to tell and declare and discern the truth the truth of God, 
that can be knowable, the truth of God that is within our grasp, the truth of God that makes me liar proof. How can you become liar proof? Well, one of the first things that I think I want to lift up for you and I today is that the, you and I must be people who are willing to check our sources. That's the first thing. You ought to put that in the chat and just say, check your sources, check your sources, check your sources. Verse number 15 says that you and I must watch out for false prophets. Why? Because they come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. Lord, have mercy. Check your sources. Check your sources. Not everyone who claims to be a proclaimer of the truth is actually proclaiming the truth. There are people who are out here who are claiming to be prophets, who are claiming to be oracles of the Most High God, who are claiming to be uh, authorities in Christian faith and, and in, in the political and the economic space. But in reality, they are wolves. Lord, have mercy in sheep's clothing. And the scripture declares it. What is at stake for you and I when we don't check our sources? We make ourselves vulnerable to ferocious wolves. And if you know anything about a ferocious wolf, amen, they're not coming to play patty cake with you, amen. They're not coming to whisper sweet nothings in your ear. They're not coming to try to bring you into more truth. They are coming to literally kill, steal, and destroy. And so you to be, for you to be liar proof me, you have to do some work to check your sources. And this is why I think it is so important for you and I to be people who are willing to do some work. Willing to do some work before we share some of these things on Facebook. Before we share some of these memes on our Instagram. Don't you become a false prophet by sharing the false words of other false prophets. Lord, I wish I could talk to somebody up in here today. Don't you dare become somebody who becomes so uh, interested in sounding deep. You know, your ears are burning with, with, uh, with the words of, of deepness, of wokeness, that you sharing things that you yourself have not investigated. I mean, can you imagine what a lie does in an echo chamber? How a false prophet in an echo chamber can reverberate a lie to the point where it starts to sound like the truth. You ought to tell somebody, stop lying to me on my Facebook page. Stop lying to me in my Instagram. Don't come into my D DMs telling me about the latest conspiracy theory when I know the truth and the truth is helping to make me free. Oh, just, just say it again. Stop lying to me. Stop lying to me. Stop lying to me. You got to understand, child of God, that there are things that God wants you to hold fast to. And one of them is truth. You must be able to discern who and what are false prophets. And there are a lot of false prophets out here in the world. There are a lot of false prophets out here in the world who are trying to, to position themselves in our lives as sources of truth. But I want you to know that one way you become liar proof is to check and to test your sources. So here, here are a couple questions. Who is the source of your truth? Some of these, these, these questions that are, are being lifted up about candidates and about political parties and about uh, 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 reparations and about uh, COVID and about all these different things. Who are the sources of these truths? If you're not willing to do the work to interrogate the source of that which you are hearing, then don't be so lazy to share. Only share what you have verified. And this is why the scriptures say that I preach to you what I have seen with my eyes. What I have heard with my ears. What I have handled with my hands. And you become liar proof by making sure you are not falling into the deception of the simple minded or the diabolical minded. 
And I'm here to tell you there's some folk out here who want to give you false truths. Why? Because, listen, false prophets proclaim a false message to maintain a false system which wars against our souls. I'm going to say it again. False prophets proclaim a false message to maintain a false system which wars against our souls and the truth that comes to set us free. So you got to check your sources in the text. Jesus said it plainly, look out for false prophets, loved ones. Don't be so susceptible to false prophets. And you must, we must cultivate tools, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, tools that help us to not become victims of fundamentalist misinformation. I say it even like this. Here's another question. Who are your third party verifiers? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Who's your third party verifier? Is it the word of God? Is it someone whose who's, who's, uh, 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 counsel you trust? Have you done some research? Listen, you wouldn't take your car to an untrained mechanic. You wouldn't trust your teeth with a dentist that didn't have no certificates. You wouldn't trust your body with an untrained doctor. So why would you trust your mind and your soul and your spirit with, with viral posts on the internet? Oh, tell somebody I'm becoming liar proof today. I'm becoming liar proof today. Don't believe the lies of false prophets. Don't share the falsehoods of false prophets, but declare in your heart and your mind, I will not be lied to. Put it in the chat again and just say it again. Stop lying to me. Stop lying to me. Stop lying to me. The second thing, the second thing that I want to lift up for our, our hearing today is that our, 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 our listening must be connected to the actions of people and not their words. If you're going to be liar proof, listen to the actions, not the words. Lord, I've, I, I'm, I, I'm helping myself this morning. Come on, put it in the chat. Say it to yourself. I must listen to the actions. I can't be listening to your words because your actions speak louder than your words. How is that a biblical truth? The scripture says in the verse number 20, by their fruit. Will you recognize them? You got folk out here who are telling you all these things. Oh, I'm a follower of Jesus. How can you be a follower of Jesus, but you hate everything that Jesus died for? Oh, I serve the God of all creation. How can you serve the God of all creation, but every decision you make is destroying creation? Oh, I follow the Prince of Peace. How can you follow the Prince of Peace when you are a warmongerer? Stop talking to me. Stop talking to us about what you say you do. Because I'm listening to your actions. Jesus, oh, he very plainly stated it, that a good tree can only bear good fruit. A bad tree can't give you nothing worthwhile. And some of us got to start asking ourselves in this moment, I need to start proofing myself. I need to start building some armor, some discernment, so I can indeed be able to make sure that the words being spoken out of my mouth in my relationships. If you say you love your partner, you can't hit your partner. If you say that you appreciate your job, you can't steal on your job. If you pray, if you say you love your body, you can't abuse your body. And in the moments and the places where we have these contradictions, it is important for you and I to do the work to make sure our actions are literally the fruits of our words. Oh, in the words of that, that great uh, uh, Super Bowl champion, Oakland born and bred uh, prophet named Marshawn Lynch, you got to be about that action, boss. Amen. Hey, we ain't talking about no words no more. We're talking about actions. 
Are you about the action? Come on, just encourage yourself and say, I got to be about this action, boss. Brother Marshawn Lynch is preaching to me this morning, telling me I can't keep talking about what I believe with my mouth, but then my words are always betraying. That's why you and I, if we're going to be liar poo, we got to keep telling ourselves, I refuse to follow the words of political leaders whose actions are totally creating the exact opposite of what they are claiming. And this is true at every level now. This isn't a Democrat or Republican uh, uh, partisan uh, 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 reality. We know that many of these elected officials are double talking. Just like many of us preachers are double talking. Just like many of you are double talking. So what we need is the mercy of God and the truth to be told to us in love and in consistency and in clarity. Why? So we can, with a, a bold voice, declare to the liars, stop lying to me. And I can take responsibility for my part in a lie and not continue to tell that lie to the next generation. So, second question, how can we be more about that action and less about the rhetoric? Talk is cheap, child of God. We say we are the church, how can we be the church? We say that we want to clothe the, the naked and, and feed the hungry and, and heal the sick. How then can we better be that in the age of COVID-45? In the age of these grass fires and wildfires and people being displaced, how can we say that we're going to be the church Rather than lying to ourselves and saying we are the church, but we can't help nobody. Some of us got empty rooms in our homes. And we know members of our church or our family who are just needing a, a, a temporary relief and a reprieve. How do we, as Isaiah 58 tells us, to bring our loved ones into our homes? Woo, some of y'all like, but pastor, you don't know my family. Amen. I know, I don't know them. I know mine, and if mine is like yours, I understand why you rather have that empty room than a filled one. <laughs> Touch your neighbor, somebody. But there has to be some opportunities for you and I to practice what we preach. Trust that God, my faithfulness, this love that I show can indeed help me and us become liar-proof. And the last thing I'll say before we wrap up, that is so important to us, is we must test the foundations. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You ought to just put that in the chat. Test the foundations. Test the foundations. Oh, Jesus. Woo! This is the last thing he said on his Sermon on the Mount. And he talked about a wise builder and a foolish builder. Jesus talked about the importance of building one's house on some rocks, a rock and not the sand. I need you to check and test your foundations. You become liar proof when your foundation has been tested. That when the storms rage, when the winds blow, when the fires burn, the foundation of your life can hold you and I. So we are not susceptible to the external elements that are sure to come and visit us without an invitation. I don't know if you have been visited by trouble and you didn't invite trouble. You was inviting goodness and you was inviting joy and you was inviting peace, but trouble showed up at your door uninvited. I'm here to tell you, it is in those moments where you begin to test the foundation of what you have built. And when you build your life on a lie, the winds, when they come, you have built your life on sand. When you and I build our lives on falsehoods, when the raging storms come, the foundation cannot hold us. And it will cause us, as the scripture says, 
to have a house that will collapse under the weight of the storms. Oh, I, but I, I believe we got some wise builders up in here today. When, when we bought our home, our home was, was built by, I believe, a wise builder at the beginning and a foolish builder at the end. Because there are parts of our home that you can tell was built with wisdom in mind. But there are other parts of our home that were built with foolishness in mind. The foundation of our home was built, had, they had to cut into the hill and had to put a slab of concrete on the foundation and built the house on top of a slab of concrete. Why? Because they realized that if I just put this house on this dirt, the erosion of the dirt's gonna cause this house to slide. But even with the foundation, we had someone come out to the house and they had to tell us, listen, whoever built this, they did a good job with the foundation, but they didn't put the reinforcements up. Lord, have mercy. That even with a good foundation, you would not need some reinforcements up in here. They said, you got to put some things in place to make sure that the house don't move even when the foundation is sure that the external elements may cause the house to start to slide ever so slightly. Listen, and they said it like this, you may not see the sliding of your house because you can't always see it with your naked eye. But over time, you may start sliding away from your foundation. So what they said is, let me put, let me put some, some steel beams in the ground. Lord, have mercy. What is that steel beam? Well, the old saints used to sing a song that said, my hope is built. Lord, I feel like preaching up in here. On nothing less than Jesus' blood. Jesus' blood is a steel beam. Jesus' righteousness is a steel beam. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean. Do I have anybody in here that's leaning? You are in your room, in your chair right now. Just lean. I'm, I'm just going to lean on the, the righteous beams of the Lord. Uh-huh. He says, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. You want to know what happens to you when you build your life on a lie? You'll start sinking. And that's what the scripture says. It says that if you put your house on some sand, the wind will literally knock your house down. And if you ever been in some quicksand, how many know you in trouble? When you are walking on a surface that appears to be sturdy, but the moment your weight gets past the thin layer of what appears to be a surface, you are falling into a literal sunken place. Lord, have mercy. How many of you know there's a lot of sunken place Christians up in here? There's a lot of folk who building their life off a lie, and you ain't nothing but a sunken place Christian, and you don't even know you a sunken place. Talking about, you know, you give you some dap and you trying to shake my hand. No, you in a sunken place. Somebody needs to take a phone and flash a light in your eye and help you to wake up so you don't stay in a place of being in a sunken place where you in a free fall and you don't know who's going to catch you. Well, I got some good news for you today. When I was falling deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, I was deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. It was love Woo! that lifted me when nothing else could help. It was love that lifted me. You become liar proof when you build your house on a rock that has the beams of love, of righteousness, of the promises of God. Oh, child of God, I want you to be liar proof today. I want you to be liar proof today. I want you to check your sources from here on out. Don't share no bad news that you can't verify. Matter of fact, don't share no bad news at all. Amen, I will bless the Lord at all times. 
I will make sure that whatever comes out of my mouth is true and just and hopeful and right and brings peace and joy. And even if I gotta tell you some truth about justice, it's gonna be told in love. It's gonna leave a back door light on for you to come on home and repent. It's good news for you white supremacists to be told that you fool of the devil. Why? Because we specialize in casting out devils up in here. You don't got to die with the devil of white supremacy in your life. You can be free. Woo. Folk tell me, oh, Pastor Mike, you can't tell them they full of the devil, but that's what they are. And Jesus said, he said it better than me. He said, your name is Legion. Oh, I feel like preaching up in here, dog. Oh, uh, listen, I want you to be liar proof. I want you to be clear about the lies being told that are trying to rob you and I of our humanity. Some of these lies are being told to literally rob you from your life. They're being told to make you believe falsehoods and deceptions while they know themselves. Truths that will lead to life. So make a decision, I will not lie to myself. But I will trust the Jesus that I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater than the love and the power of God. Song says, how, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. No one will see how great is our God. Is our God. Is our God. So God, because you're great, we come to you humbly as we know how. In an age of lies and falsehoods, in an age of deceptions, both of the spirit, of the body, of the mind, of the soul, I pray, God, that you will peel, Lord God, the filters off of our eyes. May we be people who love the truth and do not sell it. I pray for every person under the sound of my voice, God, it is not lost on me and on us that these fires, Lord God, burning all around us, Lord, while fire can at times purify, fires also destroy and consume. And fires have, Lord God, consumed, Lord, some of our homes, our memorabilia, the things that we have spent our lives, Lord God, collecting as memories and testimonies of your faithfulness and our life lessons. But God, I know that the same one who gave us the ability to make it to this point thus far can restore everything that is lost. So God, even right now, as our foundations are being tested by the tumult of this season, COVID-45, racism, white supremacy, police violence, fires, in parts of this country, Lord God, tornadoes, fire nados, Lord God, hurricanes, earthquakes, things are happening, Lord God, and Lord, you told us in your word that when these things happen, to look up for our redemption is drawing near. Lord, may these signs of our redemption not cause us to be susceptible to the fear mongering and the lies of the wicked. May we understand the diabolical schemes of those who will pounce on our anxieties and attempt to turn us into weak-minded, Lord God, fear-driven people who reach for simple solutions to complex problems. God, you needed a real solution for the problems of our rebellion and our sin, and you came in the answer yourself. And so I wanna say thank you, Lord, that the same God who came to see about us before is with us through the power of your spirit. If you're here today and you have not yet received Jesus, you don't know the Jesus that we've preached about today. I want you right now to lift up your hands 
and just declare with us. Say your name is above all names. And God, your word be of all praise. Oh, yeah. Worthy of all oh, praise. And mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Oh, mighty are the works of your hand. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. I confess, Lord, that I am full of sin and I need you to save me from the lies that tell me I'm enough without you, that I can save myself, that I can put my trust in horses and chariots and individuals when my trust should be in you. I receive your gift, God the free gift of salvation that literally cost me everything, but I will never come out without. Lord, I receive it, I accept it. Fill me with the power of your spirit. Give me new tongues to speak with. Give me, Lord God, new eyes to see, new ears to hear. Give me the power to raise dead things to life. Give me the power to withstand the serpents and the snakes that are nipping at our heels. Give us the power, God, to see the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And we'll say thank you, Lord, and all these things. Come on, put it in the chat. I am liar proof. Come on, say it again. I am liar proof. God bless you, people of the way. We love you. We love you in the name of the Lord.